Can you use the brand new M1 version of the MacBook Pro 13 as your only video editing computer? Let's find out. Oh, I gotta start watching out because I've been making too much wind noise. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So let's get right into this. In full disclosure, I wasn't actually planning to make this video, but I got so many comments from you in the YouTube comments and over on Twitter, which you should follow, links in the description. I've gotten so many questions from you all about this, I figured let's just plug it all in and see what we got. And you can tell that this is an off-standard like video because this is coming out on a non-standard video day because sometimes we just gotta, we gotta work a little harder to make sure everybody gets their questions answered. So today we're gonna take the MacBook Pro 13 with the M1 processor through what I do normally in my video editing. And spoilers for this video, yes, you can absolutely use the MacBook Pro 13 as your only video editing computer. In fact, for the last two weeks, that's all that I've been using. The MacBook Pro 13 has been my everything computer. We've already seen the MacBook Air and we've already seen the Mac Mini. So we'll just go through a few common questions that I got about video editing and we'll see where we go from there. So the first one I got, I got a lot of questions about DaVinci Resolve. I haven't shown very much in DaVinci Resolve because the render's a little slower than I prefer, but I know a lot of you out there use Resolve. Resolve is a fantastic tool that I spent most of this year using. So let's see how it works. This is the beta of the studio version of the newest version with the M1 processor capability. I believe it's 17.1, 17.1 or 17.2. I don't remember, but it's one, it's the newest one. My personal workflow splits video editing down into three parts. There's the processing, the editing, and the rendering. Resolve is my favorite processing tool ever made. I love the processing tools inside of DaVinci Resolve. And you can see here's like the media pane, the cut page, which I never use, the edit page. Yep, the fusion page, the color, the fair light, and the render. Okay, let's go back over here. Now here's a quick tip. This is not necessarily DaVinci Resolve quick tips, but if you're ever gonna use DaVinci Resolve, the first thing you need to do, the very first thing, go down here to user. You saw we went to preferences, user, project save and load, turn on live save. I also turn on project backups just cause. Live save is the best thing ever in video editing. When so if DaVinci Resolve crashes or if something goes wrong with your computer, it's always saved. You lose like seconds of time during a crash instead of hours or even an entire project. Okay, enough of that. Let's add some, let's go over here to the edit page, add some media, so import media. And we've already, thank goodness, it's almost like we planned this out that we were gonna do this. We have some 4K RAW files from the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. And you can see, so this is the RAW file out of my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And this was for one of the announcement videos of the M1 processor. So we've got it in, now let's start the processing. Again, so one of the things that I really much like about DaVinci Resolve, you can see over here, you can set up all of your clips, but over here's all of your like bins that you can create little file directories for all your stuff. So I put audio in a bin, I put screenshots in a bin, I put B-roll in a bin, I love it, I love it. Okay, first step, we've got it in here. Let's see how it plays. So what I want you to look for is right up here, you see right here, this is how many frames per second is playing at any given time. This footage is shot in 30 frames per second. They showed their brand new Okay, went straight to 30 frames per second. Which is... Now it is taking a second to get up to speed. It's not instant, but it's pretty close to instant. That was instant. That was pretty close to instant. I'm not sure if this is... So one of the things that I've noticed so far just in doing this is it looks like these two might not be totally synced up because I'm not seeing any dropped frames or skipped anything in the player. I'm just seeing the numbers are taking a second to get up to speed over here. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but it seems like the timeline is playing perfectly fine. So let's actually add our color correction really quickly. So let's import our correction. Forgot I needed to, I have my color correction saved. I just installed this on this computer, so all of my files are not yet transferred over, but let's do our color correction really quickly. And one of the things I do like about DaVinci Resolve is you can save these things called stills. So at any point when you're editing, you can just right click, grab a still, and that's your color correction. And you can then export that and then use that forever. Ooh. Let's go down to the, all right. Definitely when you're on a new monitor, sometimes colors look different. That's why it's very important to color calibrate your monitors between machines. Whew, that is looking a little, okay, let's see your exposure. Maybe like right about there. We're just gonna eyeball it for today's video. So that looks pretty good. So we've got the color correction done. Let's go to audio processing. Now here's the magic. Here's the real magic when it comes to DaVinci Resolve. So let's go down. I like having everything set to mono because sometimes when you have stereo tracks, you can have problems. So easily set it to mono. 
Now you can normalize audio levels, and I like to I like to normalize here. Now you don't have to mess with the audio. The program does it all for you. It's gonna normalize it, make it all sound great. Just, I love it. I love it. I'm telling you, DaVinci Resolve, when you take the time to learn it, it's incredible. Okay, how does that sound? 5.9 times render speed in Final Cut Pro M. Sounds pretty darn good. Okay, and you just saw, that was the processing. We imported the file, color corrected the raw footage, we audio processed it, and now we're ready to go. That's fast. That's very fast. We're also gonna do Final Cut Pro, and Final Cut Pro is not necessarily slow, but you also don't get the same kind of control over the tools that you do on DaVinci Resolve, so, you know, it is kind of a trade-off. So let's cut this. They're saying it will deliver a 5X boost in graphics performance. I'm still not seeing a single slowdown over here. When we start doing this. Here, let's do one of my patented zoom-ins. And I also really like how uh, DaVinci handles these. Turn on the magnet. There you go. Now you can start and do a keyframe. So the keyframe's right there. Come over here to the end of it. Zoom in a little bit. Come back Take over. Take advantage of this. 5.9 times render speed. Now we got the zoom in. In Final Cut. And it's still not going slow. It's also got Mac OS Big Sur. I have not yet updated to Mac OS. This is on the their low end computer, right? This version does have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Let's see how the... Yeah, physical memory used. Okay, so we are using a little more memory than the eight gigabytes would probably have been able to comfortably handle. Raw Mac files, 4K raw, no problem. Have... So let's actually, now that we've seen this, we've seen the processing, we've seen the, here's the important part though. So we've seen how quick it is for processing, we've seen how quick it is for editing, which is still pretty quick. Let's see how fast the rendering is. So we'll do our standard five minute 4K clip. Let's go over to render, we'll call it test. We'll put it on the desktop, save. We'll do QuickTime H.264, 4K. We'll leave everything else to automatic, add to render queue, add, and render all. So here's the problem that I really do have with DaVinci. It's not even a problem. So here's the, here's the reason DaVinci Resolve on these M1 processors is not my preferred method over Final Cut Pro. And you can see it right here. Now this number is how many frames per second DaVinci Resolve is rendering as it's exporting your file. And you can see here, we're at about 26 frames per second. So as this file is shot in 30 frames per second, this is a little slower, like a little slower than real time. And you can see that our estimated time remaining is over five minutes. And as this is a five minute clip, it is going slower than real time. I say that that's a negative when compared to how fast we're gonna see Final Cut Pro go in just a few minutes, but that's not necessarily bad. It's $1,300 machine, rendering 4K raw files at real time without, can you hear fan? If you hear a fan, it's not actually the computer. It's the Ninja, the recorder right here. This thing, you can hear the fan. You can't, there's no, you can't hear the fan. You can't hear anything. It's totally silent and it's rendering 4K raw files at about real time. Okay, we'll pause for a second while we let this finish. We'll see how long this actually takes. And the benefit of using DaVinci Resolve is I don't need to do the timer on the phone. It will tell us exactly how long it took. So I'll see you in four minutes and 19 seconds. Okay, and we've got a few seconds left. You can see six seconds. Okay, three, two, one, done. All right, so that took five minutes and 42 seconds to render that five minute 4K raw file. That's not too bad. It's not as shockingly impressive as we'll see in Final Cut Pro, but that's not too bad for such a budget-oriented system. So that's DaVinci Resolve, and I do miss a few of the DaVinci Resolve tools now that I'm back on Final Cut Pro X, but a fantastic, fantastic video editor, and they do have a free pared-down version that works. It still does the raw video editing um, if that's something that you're looking at. So definitely check their website out if you want to get into video editing. Now let's go to what I think is the most impressive when we talk about the new M1 processors, Final Cut Pro. Yes, it is Apple first party software, so we, I would hope that it's better than maybe a third party software, but let's go through this. So, new project, we'll also call this test. I already set up all of the files, so this is the unboxing video of the MacBook Pro. We're doing the video editing video while showing the unboxing video as a comparison. That's like some inception level of video editing. So we'll go through the same three steps that we normally go through. We'll go through the processing, the rendering, and then the editing. Now I know there is a multicam option inside of Final Cut Pro, I am a curmudgeon and I like doing things my way because once you get in your own workflow, it's just easier to do things your way. My, my favorite. My favorite. There we go. Audio synced. There. My favorite. Boom. See how fast that was? Seconds. And I didn't need to trust the computer's processing algorithm to do it. So let's cut that. Deleted. 
mute, mute. Okay, let's add our color correction. Much like DaVinci Resolve where you saw the stills, you can also set something similar to that up in Final Cut Pro X. And I have S53, and that is also a little oversaturated on this monitor, so let's bring that down just a little bit so that we're not looking that red. My skin is not actually that red. Okay, that looks good enough. Where it does kind of fall down though is on the audio processing. I don't really ever mess with the audio processing in Final Cut Pro X because it just doesn't have the same kind of power as Resolve. So I always go up roughly four decibels. How does that sound? Ever made is the MacBook Pro 13. Sounds pretty good. Are we having any issues with these files? So this is much like the other video editing videos. This main clip right here is HEVC, so high efficiency video codec from the Lumix S5, which is pretty rough for computers to handle. This is 4K 8-bit from the Lumix G9, and this is 4K 10-bit from the Lumix GH5. This is a pretty rough set of files for a video editor to work with, and we do have it in better quality. It's not a, So you can set it to better performance or better quality. Better performance gives you a lower resolution display here, and it makes it a little easier for your computer to edit. We have it set to better quality, which will show us exactly what we've got. So let's see, how is it working? The MacBook Pro 13. So the MacBook Air has 30 watt. No drops. Whoop, no scratching. I always cut those no scratches out of the video. So this is what I'm comfortable with. I love these things. That I'm not fix seeing, my hands. I'm not seeing any drops. No drops. I'm not going to waste your time with, with this. We've already seen this in the MacBook Air and the MacBook Mini. F you know, suffice to say that the new M1 processors, when you're using Final Cut Pro, they're insane. They're insane. So let's cut these out. We got everything turned on. I do think that these new... There. Still no drop frames. Here we go. Oh, I missed. <laughs> I definitely screwed that up. I definitely screwed that up, and that's embarrassing. It's clearly the, Here, let's watch me child, fail again. It's clearly the child that Apple likes more. Let's watch me fail picture. again. You ready? You ready? Here we go. Oh. Fail. Gary, messing that up. Super simple stuff, and you still... That was very... I was very embarrassed that I messed it up twice. Okay, so no big issues here. Let's turn everything on, and now let's render this five-minute clip through Final Cut Pro X and see how that goes. So settings... We'll keep it in H.264 faster in code. We'll do 4K. We're going to end up with a 1.89 gigabyte file. And here we go. We'll call it test one. Save. Start. Okay. Let's see how fast this sucker renders. 1%. 2%. 3%. Okay. I guess I won't count down everything. So we'll again pause for a minute and we'll come back when this is completed. Okay. 92% and... I mean, the fans still aren't even going. That's wild. That's wild. Okay, we're just about done. And boom. Three minutes and five seconds. Three minutes and five seconds to render files that would bring another computer to its knees. The computer's like barely warm, like room temperature levels of warmth, not even warm. The MacBook Air when we did this did get a little bit warm, but the active cooling in here I don't know what else to say. Like, this is fantastic. Like, this is the reason why I've been using this and why I've switched to Final Cut Pro. HEVC by itself will generally cause huge problems. Huge problems in here. Just so you see that I'm not selling you, you know, that I'm not selling you a story. HEVC. That file will normally bring a computer to its knees. And I've got that and 4K 8-bit and 4K 10-bit and it did it in about three minutes. I don't know what else you need. So the answer to your question at the beginning of the video, can you use the brand new MacBook Pro 13 as your only video editing computer? You absolutely can because I certainly do. And if you liked this video and you're curious to see a comparison between this and the MacBook Pro 16, here's a video where you can find just that. You should go watch it. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.